Hello everyone and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can manually adjust the skin tone in a video. Okay, so as you can see here, we have this footage. So I went ahead and did some basic correction, adjusting the exposure and saturation. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new node, okay? And on this new node, we will start with the skin tone adjustment manually. The go-to technique, of course, is that you can use the qualifier to qualify the skin and then refine the selection of the qualifier, which is going to take a lot of time. And then you can work on adjusting the skin. This method is good, but it takes a lot of time, as I said. And sometimes the contrast between the skin and the rest of the video is too aggressive. Okay, so I have a simple way that you can use much easier and the changes or the adjustment that you will add to the skin will be smooth. Okay, will be the opposite of aggressive, which is smooth. And we will do this using the curves. Okay, guys, so let me show you how to adjust the skin using the curves. All right, so in the second note, choose curves. And then right here, I want you to choose hue versus hue. Why hue versus hue? Because we want to adjust the colors. So let me explain those, okay? So you can better understand why I chose hue. So hue versus saturation means that we will be adjusting the saturation of a hue of a specific color. Hue versus luminance means we will be adjusting the luminance of a color. Luminance versus saturation means we'll be adjusting the saturation of the luminance. And now you can understand or guess what saturation with saturation is and hue versus hue is. Okay, so select this one. Now with the qualifier, I'm gonna go ahead and select an area of the skin. And I want the area to be neither dark and neither too bright. Okay, so something in the middle like this. All right, you can see now that we have a point here, the center point, this is the hue that we just selected. And the two points here, are the limiters okay these will limit what we do with the hue okay the next thing i want you to come over here and choose the vector scope okay and why we choose in the vector scope is that because we want to make sure that the color is not going toward yellow or green okay we want the color to follow this line which is the skin tone line and if you don't have this right here you can come over here to the settings after you choose the vector scope and you can check show to X zoom, two times zoom, and check show skin tone indicator, okay? Then you will have something like this. If you don't have these, you will have something like this. And if you have these, you have something like this. Okay, and the next thing you wanna do is that we want to adjust these, the hue versus hue, to match this color to this line. Okay, now we don't want to match it exactly to this line. We just want to make sure it is aligned with this line, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of hue rotates. Okay, you can see now how the color is moving. And maybe adjust the input of the hue to the left, okay? Because I don't want it to be near green or yellow, like this. So the worst tint you can have on the skin is green or yellow because it tends to make people look sick. Okay, so we want to avoid doing this. Now, one thing I can do to get a clear selection of the skin and understand what I'm doing on a vector scope is that I can come over here to window, select a mask, Okay, and then adjust it to an area of the skin, maybe like the forehead, like this. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in. And then softness, I will reduce it to one. There we go. I think this is a good selection. Now, if I go back to the curves, I want you to pay attention to this. Look, if I increase the hue rotate too much, look what happens to the skin. All right, so you can see some magenta right here. And if I decrease it too much, you can see it is getting toward green, okay? And we want to avoid this at all costs. So what I will do is keep it somewhere 
you know, around six maybe. Like this. It's not too aggressive and you can barely see the magenta or red. Okay, I prefer the color of the skin to be toward red or magenta rather than toward green or yellow. Maybe increase it just a little bit more. There we go. Once we finish, we can go ahead and remove the window. Okay. Now if I go to workspace, viewer mode, full page viewer, just this. Open the notes. And you can see the before and after. Okay, guys. Now you can see the adjustment is there. It's not too aggressive. It's smooth. And we can definitely see some switch from a little bit of green tint to reddish sort of magenta. So this process is creative, which means it's going to be different from a person to another. But the rules are pretty much the same. All right, let's go back to the normal viewer mode. Click here, bring back the notes. And now I want to extend those limiters a little bit, okay, so I can reach more areas of the scan, just like this. Okay, guys? Now we finished with you versus you. You can see this line is almost perfectly aligned with the line of the skin tone, okay? With what is recommended in the Venture Resolve. You don't have to pay attention to these areas, these lights right here, because these are just coming from the highlights, okay? So you don't pay attention to those and from other colors on the video, okay? The most important line is this one right here, the most obvious one. Now, finally, all we can do is add another node, and this one is going to be for saturation, okay? So let's go ahead and switch from hue versus hue to hue versus saturation because we want to increase saturation of the hue. And one thing I want to tell you about hue and skin, okay? So the darker the skin, the little bit hue you need to add or the little bit saturation you need to add, okay? You only need to add small amount of saturation. And the lighter the skin, the more saturation you can add before your image starts getting distorted. Now, since she is an African-American woman and she has dark skin, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of saturation after I select the skin. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit. Something like this. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I will extend the limiters so it can reach more range or tonal range of the skin. Just have to be careful with this. Okay, guys, now let's go ahead and see the before and after. Before, after the saturation. Okay. So, guys, this is my process. Okay. When it's come to adjusting the tonal range or the, the skin tone of a subject, I usually prefer to use this method to use in the qualifier, then refine the selection with the qualifier, and then adjust the skin, okay? Because I feel like it tends to create a more aggressive skin look, and I like my skin tones to look as natural as possible, okay? I, don't, I, I hate to overdo it. So using the curves, hue versus hue and hue versus saturation, is a good way to target the skin tone of a subject without over killing it. So guys, I'm not saying don't use the qualifier to qualify the skin, okay? A lot of pros use the qualifier. I'm saying that the qualifier 
is quite aggressive and you should be careful with the adjustments you input to the skin okay this method is much easier and it gives a more natural result to the skin okay the best way of course is to use a combination of the qualifiers and the curves